with a tear in my eye. This is the greatest moment in my life. The man to beat me haven't been born yet. I have no followers. I have only brothers and sisters, all in the name of cause. I am the best on this microphone. Nobody can touch me. I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, got a lot of people trying to drain me at a synergy. All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, happy to welcome on someone who reps GZ Battles. I battle Beast Mode, Pineapple Depressed. I've got Dale Denton on the program. How's it going, man? Yes, sir. Pretty good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I was just wondering about the Theo Vaughn show you hit up recently. I, I It begs the question, did you, in fact, get that hitter? Oh, dude. He he was amazing live, man. I'm a I'm actually a huge fan of his, man, and he put on a great show. He had an o- opening act that was pretty hilarious too. Kansas City, I've never been there, man. It's a pretty dope city if you guys haven't checked it out. Yeah, no, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, man. Theo Vaughn is a pretty amazing live act for sure. But I kind of wanted to, you know, figure out what your first exposure to hip hop was. Like, when did you start getting into hip hop culture? Oh man. Uh forever ago man i was probably like eight i used to go to uh the boys and girls club downtown i used to live uh by the boys and girls club me and my brother would go there all the time and just remember listening to a lot of shit i shouldn't have been listening to at the time so like uh a lot of eminem which is cliche but uh just uh yeah when i was when i was real young i i kind of grew up in a a shady part of town so we went to the boys and girls club a lot and just hang out with older kids and you know they had like a teen club room and i'd sneak in there and they'd be listening to music you know so probably you know back in the day that's awesome so when did acapella battle rap kind of come into the picture for you actually uh yeah so i have a buddy um who actually did a couple battles uh in beast mode and he had one eye battle or two battles in eye battle just like god rap um, he actually has been a long time friend of mine and he would always come, he's always comes over to my house and he got into battle rap a lot and I would always just hear him listen to it on his phone. I was like, oh man, that's pretty dope. He, uh, I remember one of the first battles was, uh, he was listening to a, a dude named Domes. I don't know if you ever heard Domes, but, uh, I was like, oh, this is pretty dope, man. And then, um, he just was like, oh, we should try it sometime and actually like started doing it. Uh, there used to be some leagues online, and so you would just, you know, they'd give you an opponent, you'd record a three-minute verse, send it to them, they'd splice it real shitty together, and you got a little battle, you know? And so, really started there, did a few live local shows, but, like, nothing big, no, like, I actually started a league myself just to get a live battle. So, it was, it's probably been four years since I started battling, but... Since I've been into battling, probably seven or eight. Yeah, I noticed you battled about like ten times online and made it to the finals of a tournament there. But I had a question for you: Do you ever think you're gonna end up battling Hemp the Dawn? <laughs> oh God, no, dude! I don't even know what happened to that guy. He uh, I think he got arrested like a bunch of times, like for selling like like that synthetic weed and stuff. <laughs> oh, I didn't so even I know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. You Do you know him? No, I just noticed that he kind of backed out of a oh, couple okay. battles you had lined up. I was just curious. Yeah, and it was it made me really mad because he was like this local guy who talked like a big game, and I was like, yo, I want to battle you. And he was like, only if we bet money. So I was like, all right, we were going to bet $400, and he no-showed on me twice, man. So yeah, I was pretty shitty about that. But um, yeah, and actually when it comes to that online shit too, uh, that's how I got hooked up with, uh, Lex Luthor actually. I had a, I was in maybe the semi-finals, I really did round and a guy like no showed an online pilot just didn't. And I thought it was a really good verse of mine and for some reason I randomly just messaged Lex. Only person I sent a message to and I was just like, yo, you think you could check this battle out if you have a chance? I just want critique, you know, because I didn't get a judge's decision I want automatically. I thought this was some good stuff. And he was like, at first he was like, oh, I don't know if I have time right now, but maybe soon. And I was like, all right, man, that's cool, you know. And he immediately replied and was like, no, I'll watch it right now. I'm about to watch it. And then watched it and literally offered me a plate right then and there for two months later. 
Yeah, and it really seems like you appreciate having Lex as, like, a friend in the battle rap sphere and also as someone who can impart wisdom, but it also seems like you get annoyed by newer battlers who just get mad when you, you sort of give an honest opinion and everything like that. How frustrating is that, like, when you try to, I guess, pay it forward and maybe people aren't as, you know, open to that sort of thing? Maybe they think you're coming at them from a different kind of perspective when maybe you're just trying to be helpful. Oh, about, like, tell, like if I'm critiquing someone and they're not happy about what I say, I mean... Yeah, with battle rap, man, it's just some people take a while to develop thick skin, I think. And uh, I don't know, some people, you know, and some people just don't like people, even if you don't know. So maybe some of them just don't like me. I don't know. But uh, um, I mean, you just got to take it for what it is. You know, if you're trying to help them and they don't want to they don't want to listen, then you can't really do anything about it. But uh, it is what it is. I mean, some people, most people, I feel like are appreciative of it. Yeah, well, that's it's, good. Some people, hard, you know. Yeah, no, some people I'm just sorry, can't take ahead. constructive criticism for whatever reason. I think they think it's like some like affront on their character or something like that. But I noticed you've been yeah. logging in some travel miles a fair bit. Like you had a couple battles. Like you battled one popular and smoked out, and then you had that you know battle at South by Southwest. What was it like performing at South by Southwest? Because it seems like you're like a big sort of indie music fan. Like I think I saw you shout out Glass Animals at one point. So what was it like performing at South by oh, Southwest? Yeah. Oh, it was awesome, man. Uh, Austin is a is an awesome city, man. It's beautiful. Uh, the The venue was amazing, man. It was a uh, on top of a rooftop, and they had like these a little stage and these lights, and it was it was awesome, man. The whole just the whole weekend was really dope. I am a big indie music fan. Glass Animals is one of my favorite bands. Uh, I don't. I think a lot of people just think that. Like most battle rappers, I'm gonna listen to rap, but that's like one of the, I don't listen to rap as much as I probably listen to indie music. But yeah, no, I've had great conversations with people. Like, I mean, SM, for instance, like he has a lot of great indie bars, and we were talking a fair bit about that. But it seems like you really dig like Mac Miller and you know Frank Ocean and Chance the oh. Rapper and everything like that. But am I correct in saying that your favorite band is probably Arctic Monkeys? Ooh, it would it would be close. I would say that. Uh, it's got to be between Arctic Monkeys and Modest Mouse. Modest Mouse is just not as consistent with cranking out music. Arctic Monkeys' new album, though, was kind of weird. It was like a concept album about a hotel, and it was, I don't know, it was kind of weird, but I go back and forth, you know. But they're definitely up there. Actually, the, uh, my girlfriend of, like, four years now, our first date was actually, I took her to an Arctic Monkeys concert. <laughs> yeah, you pulled a sly maneuver. You got, like, the old spare ticket on deck sort of thing? Yeah, yeah. Damn, bro, you do your research. <laughs> <laughs> I try I try to. I try to, you know, keep my ear to the ground and everything like that. But I also noticed you had your English teacher from high school at a battle event, and he was kind of talking to you about battles. Did he impart any worthwhile ideas onto you at all? Or He he did talk to me about it, and, yeah, he was just like, uh, he had messaged me, and I just hadn't got back to him. And he was like, hey, man, you know, I, he's like, I think it's really cool what you're doing. He would... He actually gave me advice and telling me to try to stray back from the, like, street stuff and be more of, like, you know, what people think I am. But, uh, yeah, he was just, he thought it was cool, and he was like, I think it's really cool. And uh, he's like, I, you know, I write for a living. He's like, I could always give you advice. But uh, he, was at, he was also my wrestling coach, so. Oh, no way. So you cool. have, like, a bit of an amateur wrestling background then, eh? Yeah, I wrestled in uh, high school. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, semi-state my senior year. Oh, that's awesome. I noticed you were commenting on the GSP versus Habib fight, but I didn't know you were coming at it from, like, uh, you know, an amateur wrestling sort of perspective. That's cool. I didn't know you were a grappler there. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I got a couple, a couple like, small, like, like uh, offers to go wrestle, but it wasn't anything big. And, uh, yeah, just I did it, like, throughout my high school. I was pretty, pretty solid, but nothing too crazy. I... I went to semi-state and I lost to the kid in the first round who ended up winning the state. He was like a three-time state champion. So, but yeah, I, I've always loved wrestling and like I did for a while after wrestling think about getting into MMA, but it just never came to fruition. But I know how important wrestling is in it. So, oh, I mean, it's like one of the great bases you can have for sure because there's that work ethic that comes with it too, whereby like you can apply yourself to learning the other disciplines. Too. Oh yeah, call it six min six minutes of legal torture. <laughs> yeah, and then you had that bar That's in the red flag battle where you said, I'm pulling a Dana White. You ain't going to put up another fight after your pride getting taken, which as a Pride FC guy, that's a great reference. Pride never die. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, that was 
those are always those small bars that I just is like a is a I call it a filler punch, you know, where I just I don't want to just put in some fillers. I'm trying to throw a little jab, and then it automatically like it'll hit bigger than my final punch. It's those ones like that is one of those I remember. You know, you mentioned your wrestling career and everything like that, but I also noticed you had a bit of a different title to your credit. Are you and Luke Newcomb still the beer pong champs of Smitty's House? Yeah, man, and that was a pretty awful tournament. We were playing outside. It was windy. <laughs> it was windy as fuck. Uh, Luke is uh, Luke Newcomb is a crazy man. That that guy was up for like thirty six hours last year. I'm pretty sure at the Wave Two. Um, yeah, he's he's pretty crazy. I woke up early. He had still not went to sleep, and I don't think he slept until after the event. <laughs> but uh, yeah. But, yeah, we are, as far as I'm aware, last time I was at Smitty's, we didn't play. So, I mean, yeah, well, I think so, man. Might have to hit him up. We're going to have to defend that. Yeah, I got to get some uh, defenses under your belt and everything like that. But it seems like you're also interested yeah. in, like, getting some art going on as well. Like, you yeah, painted a picture of your dog there. How long have you been, you know, painting and stuff like that? Oh, God. See, I am actually far from an artist. I'm pretty terrible at it. That was actually a Christmas gift to my girlfriend because she actually loves painting and it was a whole you you send in your picture of your dog they like sketch it out for you you come in and paint it and then they serve you alcohol so you get drunk and paint your dogs and uh we both love our dogs so i was like oh perfect gift because she likes to paint but she doesn't do it that often i just took the bullet i'm actually a terrible terrible artist and i i tried you know <laughs> Yeah, well, you're doing your best. There's nothing wrong with that. But I was kind of curious, yeah, like, with I, your I, Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was going to say, I do appreciate the arts, though. I just can't do it. But, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, no worries, for sure. And I was just wondering, like, based on your name being, you know, Dale Denton, as you're battling and everything like that, what's the best Pineapple Express bar that you've ever heard? Ooh, um, I think I had a pretty good one, and Red Flag had a very good one. I can't remember word for word what Red Flag said, but... He was mentioning how Dale Denton is a process server. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something about, uh, of course, so something about, of course, it makes sense because anytime you're serving somebody, you're pretending to be someone else. I, I'm pretty sure I butchered it, but it was a really good bar. And then uh, I had a bar against uh, Sweeney where I said, um, I'm Dale Denton. You'll be Saul Silver at this event. Because everyone knows you need Dale's help to get this joint lit, which I really like, but kind of fell flat with the crowd. <laughs> oh, I like that too. That's kind of weird. But what do you think? Like factored into that? Like, um, that was like one of uh, that was like my third or fourth battle, and you know, I will completely agree with everyone when I say my delivery still isn't very good. But that was like you can only imagine three or four battles in, so <laughs> uh, it was just you know just all the stuff of starting good bar, but just didn't deliver it. Right. Lex reacted a lot, but not the crowd didn't really. <laughs> no, I mean, like it's, it's good though, in a way, because you'll learn from those experiences and it seems like you're pretty, you know, analytical with your performances. Like you had a GZ that dropped like earlier on in the year sort of thing. And you said you weren't necessarily too proud of the performance, but that you went wild in the casserole battle. Do you think it's important to you be that self-aware and analytical and trying to like build on like, not necessarily, I mean, obviously, like, people scrutinize their own work a little heavier than others, but do you feel like that's an integral part of just you getting better and just sort of improving? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're not doing that, then, yeah, then what's the point? I mean, I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke and say, yeah, like, that dose battle was, you know, I had a few slips and I wasn't proud of it, and that motivated me to be that much better against Castro, which I think was my best battle, but, yeah, man, I think, if you're not being honest with yourself, then you're not going to get better. You're just going to keep doing what you're doing and just getting by. Like, I really care about, like, because I, ha I do have fans, or you know, surprisingly enough. So, like, when they watch my battle, I don't want them to be like, Jesus Christ, Dale, you know. So I'm trying to be the best I can be. So, yeah, like, if you're not analyzing yourself and just think you're perfect 100% of the time, then, yeah, I don't know what you're trying to do. Yeah, and I'm kind of wondering, like, to that point, like, what your writing process is. If you have any kind of, like, I guess, defined methodology, like, do you kind of, like, you know, turn on records that influence you and kind of, like, just write in a closed room? Or you're, like, 
hanging out with buddies and certain concepts will come to your mind and then you'll kind of go off of that? Like, is there any sort of defined, I guess, methodology for your battle prep? Um, well, like, I usually am always trying, like, not always trying, but if I see something, like, uh, you know, and I think of a concept, I'll write it down. But, yeah, when I have a opponent, I'll, you know, think of some name flips and stuff, you know, go down the line, and then I'll try to think of, I, usually before I start writing for opponent, I always have leftover ideas, like, you know, probably like a 100 leftover ideas, but try to come up with a good 15 to 20 new concepts before I even go into the writing process and then just kind of go from there and just uh, try to space out. You know, I usually know what my better punches are going to be and stuff. So I try to, you know, keep them spaced out. Don't try to fill one round with massive haymakers and then a filler round, you know, try to spread it out. But, uh, you know, and I do, I usually typically am like, I'll think of ideas anywhere, but, when I'm writing, I usually am alone in my room most of the time, just chilling, you know. I'll have some indie music playing, like, quietly sometimes. but And I always have to have the fan on. I have to have that white noise. Yeah, you're just, like, jamming the Decemberist and just, like, writing, like, a Hot 16 sort of thing? Yeah, yeah, you know. Some days a Hot 16 will come out. Some days two bars will come out because, like, that's what I will accredit a decent amount of my stumble performances is, is because I try to use every bar to my advantage. I I will not write something that I think is bad. Like, I just can't do it and know that I have to say it. So sometimes I will be writing pretty close up to the battle because I just am not happy with what I have or, you know, and so that's kind of a, a thing that I have to deal with. You know, I'm kind of a perfectionist in the writing or I try to be, but kind of takes away from my performance yeah and like to the point of the writing i also noticed you had a pretty good reference in the greedy grimes battle as it pertains to pro wrestling you said i make you feel what i spit like an entrance from triple h and i thought that was a fire up so you like a long time sort of pro wrestling fan too oh uh, not a long time but definitely i mean what kid wasn't when you're you know six to like 13 14 years old i used to love it man every you have the video games the freaking action figures I was a huge fan back in the day. I couldn't tell you who was in the WWE nowadays. I saw people talking about uh, WrestleMania the other day. But, yeah, I used to be a massive fan. Uh, Bret Hart was my dude back in the day. I went to, I remember I went to a show. My mom bought us tickets, and we were, like, way up in the rafters, and I got upset, apparently, because he didn't see me wearing his glasses. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I used to be a fan. I'm, I haven't kept up with it in years, so. What were your thoughts on Bret Hart getting jumped by that guy at the Hall of Fame ceremony? That was just so greasy. I'm like, how are you gonna how are you gonna attack a guy who's like a cancer survivor and has gone through a stroke and just everything like that? Yeah, that was crazy. And at first, I didn't think that it like he actually got hit, but like it looked like he was kind of bruised up. And yeah, that's pretty fucked up. I don't know. Did they ever confirm? Did you see that they uh, were trying to say that like it was uh, the Simpsons had predicted something like that? Like oh like yeah, no, I think I think that was like a Photoshop thing though. I think that's from like two okay, different Simpsons because, episodes, but yeah. Yeah, because I remember they did that for Pokemon Go and it had my ass tricked for like a day. I was telling people about this and then so I was like, I'm not gonna say anything until I do my research. Yeah, because yeah, I'm pretty sure I mean that was like a well done sort of thing. I almost had to double check myself. Like I was like, was that the same Simpsons episode or was that like a couple different ones? But yeah, the power of memes. Simpsons predicting the future. Yeah, for real. And I'm not like a I like I like the Simpsons, but I'm not like an avid fan, so I wouldn't I would have no idea. Oh yeah, no, I'm the same way. Like I like the Simpsons, but some people are just so into the minutia of it and they've got like so many esoteric references and I'm like, Yeah, I don't really you know, know uh, what you're yeah. talking about. Witty Smitty, he loves the Simpsons. Yeah, shout out Witty Smitty for sure. He definitely does some good stuff out there, no doubt. But I also kind of wanted to talk about, you know, your day job there. And like to that point, I'm kind of wondering, what do you think gets washed more, your hands when you're working at the hospital or Hindu Rock? Oh, my God. Oh, fuck, dude. It is that stuff washing your hands a lot. But, oh, God, Hindu Rock, man. That guy, dude, I don't know what, why, like, I just, like, attract some of the, like, most peculiar people in battle rap that just not like me with a passion, but I don't know, man. That guy is just trying to be civil about the whole thing, but like, just not a fan of the guy. Let's just be real. <laughs> Everyone knows that. 
Yeah, well, that was a good battle that uh, you guys had. I mean, I thought, well, I mean, I thought you performed pretty well, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously not happy with that third. I had a pretty long fuck up, but I will say that this motherfucker was talking throughout my whole round. I mean, no no uh, excuse, but yeah, I liked my first two rounds. I, uh, but, I mean, I got booked again, so and I don't think he did ever on King of the Dawn. So, I mean, that'll tell you something, at least, even if you didn't like that performance. Yeah, no, I mean, I... I mean, the stumble, I think, was, like, definitely tied to the fact that he was, you know, talking through your round and everything like that. So I think a lot of people that were watching, you know, picked up on that. And, I mean, it wasn't like a joke. It wasn't like you forgot your material necessarily. It just got yeah. disrupted, you know? I will say, yeah, that as much as I have stumbled in a battle, never will I say that I've choked. I've always finished my material. I've always got it eventually. But, yeah, I mean, I did notice that a lot of the comments in that battle were not just the vibe that he was putting off in that battle. Like, he... He thought that I was like a hometown hero in that battle, but really people, he was just rubbing so many people the wrong way that they just wanted to see him lose. They didn't even care who he was battling. So, I mean, you, you mentioned like a certain, like certain locales you'd want to go to. Is bots a league you would maybe want to battle for? or? Uh, maybe. I mean, I know that a lot of people, I know there's some bad blood that goes on between people that I'm not 100% sure with. So I would just have to make sure everything was cool. But uh, I mean, as long as they were welcoming and it was a it was a guy I wanted to battle, I wouldn't I wouldn't see why not. Oh yeah, true. Okay, I know what you're talking about for sure. But I also thought it was kind of funny that a lot of people were telling you you looked like Miles Teller. Like, how many people do you think were kind of telling you that you looked like him? Dude, I've gotten that. I get a lot of you know Miles Teller, Michael Sarah. I mean, uh, the classic people just call any scrawny white guy McLovin, so you get that. And uh, also, like, uh, Hito Turkoglu, I used to get all the time in high school. He used to play for the Orlando Magic. He's like a Turkish basketball player. I feel like I'm kind of one of those people, too, in a way, though. Like, a lot of people would be like, oh, you look like so-and-so, you look like this person. But that was more so when I didn't have the facial hair. I was just like, oh, screw it, I'll just grow out a beard, so I won't get quite as many of those comparisons. I just kind of get the obligatory, like, ZZ Top type things that, like, riff on the beard more so. You're lucky, man. Some of us, like myself, just can't grow that facial hair like that. <laughs> the boys over here struggling with the facial hair. Seems like you kind of struggle with the indoor soccer in a way, though. Like, how many times have you hurt your calf playing indoor soccer? Oh, dude, that was just like, I played a lot when I was younger and stuff, and so we got a team together. It wasn't in that good of shape, man. First game. It was like that. I kept hurting myself throughout the season. I paid my sixty bucks, so hurt myself first game. I had to pull myself out. Let it rest. Second week, go out there halfway through the game. I'm like, nah, I can't run. And it ended up to where, like, six weeks in, eventually my leg was like, I had to go get a uh, was an ultrasound on my leg because I had a busted a blood vessel. So I was done after that, and I haven't played since. I've <laughs> uh, been trying to get in shape though, so if that ever does come around, I won't hurt myself. Well, I'm sorry to hear about the end of your indoor soccer career, but you've been really great with the time. I'm curious if there's anything you want to add as we're wrapping things up here. No, man, I just appreciate you having me on and freaking going in depth with those questions, man. I was like, dang, that was that was dope, man. I didn't expect that. Uh, no, I just appreciate you having me on. And anyone who listens, appreciate you all watching my battles and stuff. Uh, do the best that I can, you know. <laughs> He's representing Water League, your mom's favorite battler. Great yes, having sir. Dale Denton on the program. Thanks for the time, and have a great rest of your night there, man. Hey, you too, man. I appreciate it.